Hello, this is Fernando Ribeiro, and on this video, I would like to show you the folders and explain a bit of the folder structure and hierarchy on the Yuma framework, so you have an overview. Uh, I will keep the the crawl scene open while I explain everything. So let's start with the release notes. This is basically a TXT file to uh, show the changes. Uh, this is, will basically cover all of the main changes since the beta test. Uh, it's basically, this started like something like six months ago. Uh, I'll just show here in the finder. So you can see this is just a TXT file you can open anywhere. And this file still requires some updates uh, since we had many uh, changes on the week before the asset store release. So I still need to update the release notes with the latest changes. Here you can see the editor scripts. They are mainly responsible for the tools we provide up here. Uh, it's the Yuma uh, toolbar. So there are many uh, functionalities that we include and are provided by those editor scripts. I will be able to explain more of them and open each of them later. But uh, I had to give you an overview that this is where they, they are uh, kept. And we have here the example folder. Uh, this is where, of course, we have the scenes, the example scenes here. And, uh, well, we have all of the contents that has been used on the example scenes here. Uh, material, prefabs, and uh, scenes themselves. We also provide many uh, extra scripts here. And uh, the texture used on the, on the ground, and the retextures. Uh, here I would like to show you the slider model. model. This is the what is being uh, instantiated for each of the sliders and you can basically change the appearance here but I, I really recommend you to write your own uh, interaction uh, for adjusting outer shape uh, from scratch so you can have more flexibility and more uh, freedom on your equation. Okay, so I will just remove this one um, from here and let, let me keep on. Uh, so the generated textures, uh, if you're familiar with the shadow game example scene they provided, I'm, uh, we started using their uh, example shader they use on their characters. And uh, in fact, some of our own uh, example shaders for Yuma are based on the, their uh, sample shaders they, they provide. We have the light calculation to generate the texture for those specific shaders. And then we have the Yuma assets. This is basically where all of the uh, files like textures and 3D models are kept. Here we also have the DNA. I won't spend much time on this right now. I will be able to explain this later. But well, basically, uh, quickly, the, the DNA is responsible for converting the slider values, like uh, height, head size, this kind of thing, the actual uh, bond changes. So every time you're changing those values, the DNA converter is responsible to actually changing the avatar shape. Basically, we have Yuma DNA as the uh, most generic uh, DNA uh, script. This is basically the reference for all of the other DNAs we can use. And well, uh, we provide the example code of the humanoid DNA that keeps the variables to the to what we actually change on the sliders, as you can see here, like the height, head size, and so on. And then we have the material symbols. This is uh, quite important. 
So basically, when we generate the afters, we use this, the reference of those samples to create the materials the, the afters will be using. Uh, let me just select one of them here, uh, the female one. First of all, you will notice the female, female use two uh, materials, the base shader and the transparent two-sided. Uh, so, for the females, uh, we have the transparent two-sided material together with this uh, atlas that is in fact one single texture for the eyelashes and uh, this requires the two materials. You can see here the, the rest of the textures on this uh, cropped atlas. Uh, now uh, let me just select here the male one and uh, you will see there is only one material and uh, it's a uh, corresponding atlas here, down here. Let me show the diffuse one. Also here, let me see, yeah, you can take a look here on the elven ears and the extra texture it uses on the atlas. So those uh, two samples are used for all of the afters and uh, you can actually uh, change the shader. You can see here the base shaders Yuma provide. That's because Yuma requires some special uh, ways to access the specular and gloss. But uh, if I use the unlit texture, you will notice that we still uh, have the, everything up and running using the unlit texture. Basically because the unlit uh, shader don't actually require any access to gloss and specular inform information. So uh, it, it would work out of the box. And uh, in this case, you will see if I select the male material, it's using the only texture and only the uh, Gfuse um, Atlas. If I change for the ring shader or any other shader from Yuma itself or other, uh, everything will change and update. But of course, we won't have any specular and gloss uh, information. And of course, the, also the normal map. So it won't uh, work uh, completely because the atlas of the normal map and this extra data was not generated. Okay, so here we have the three most uh, important uh, content folders. We have the overlays, races, and uh, slots. Basically, overlays are the textures that we use on the afters. And uh, we have both female, male, and shared textures. Shared textures are textures that are both used for male and female afters. Uh, if I select here, you can take a look on fuse and normal. You will, uh, for sure, uh, feel this normal map is wrong because of the color. Usually they are more uh, close to the blue color or purple and uh, they don't use the normal map tag. That's because uh, Johan managed to uh, implement a solution that packs uh, the specular and gloss data together with the normal map texture. This uh, saved us uh, from using a third texture and uh, it's really useful. Here you, you can see that we have this asset uh, that keep the texture list uh, using those two textures. We also have some other uh, information that I won't explain right now. This is for later. We have the races. Here I'm showing the prefabs. So in case you want to change what components are uh, available and included on the afters created, you can actually take a look on the prefabs and understand what is being included. So here you, you can see the components and uh, the, the base mesh. Uh, so if you want to, to remove something, this is the right place to take a look and to understand how it's used. You can see here we have seven uh, materials. 
separated materials on the base mesh. But the entire base mesh and those materials are uh, exchanged with the, the ones generated at runtime. So if you want to remove uh, the locomotion script or the colliders, rigid body, that's the place to remove them. And of course then you need to apply the changes so that uh, the prefab itself keeps the, those changes and do, they are applied to the final avatars. Here you can see the uh, race asset that keeps the, uh, the prefab and other information, like the DNA converter I explained early here. So the race uh, is basically responsible to tell uh, what um, this, this after will look like and how changes will be applied to him. We have also the possibility to include extra bones, that's why this uh, is there, but uh, this is something I will probably record in a specific video to explain. And we also have the typos. Typos is basically how we handle the Makani avatar creation integrated with the Yuma system. This also requires a lot of explaining to understand how, how it works, but th this is for later. And slots, basically uh, Every content that requires a mesh is a slot. So here you saw the male genes, now the years. Uh, you can see in this, uh, this pack I included, included separated pieces, so you can exchange it between uh, human ears and elven ears, for example. And you have the, the, the actual um, Skinned mesh render uh, that is the, provided on this file here, and uh, we have the mesh, and this is the asset itself that is used for generating the after mesh. So we have the link for the mesh render. You can see it here. We have the the material sample used. Uh, and we have some extra data, like the overlay scale, that is usually for optimization. The, I will have a specific video explaining about uh, avatar optimization, especially useful if you're creating for mobile devices. We have some extra information, that is for later. <laughs> and uh, we also have the slot DNA. Uh, that's something I also want to explain later, but uh, basically this is responsible if you want to customize the slot itself with some extra slider. Well, let me just uh, change the, the material sample again. And uh, this time let's use a different shader, maybe the, the ring, the bump and the specular ring. Uh, you will notice now that all of the afters are now using this uh, ring uh, shader. So uh, if you take a look here on those elven ears, let me show you the content used for generating those. So we have here on the slots, on the female one, we have the elven ear used, this one. For the slots, the mesh itself, uh, even if both male and female use the, the, the oven layers, they require separated meshes. But uh, as you can see, the texture is the same for both of them. And uh, if I open here the atlas, you can see the texture on the, on the atlas being used. Okay, so we are running out of time for this video. Um, I need to stop this one right now, but uh, Hopefully I will be able to upload the rest of this video uh, on the following day and uh, we will keep explaining the, the rest of the folders. So that's it for now guys, uh, see ya, goodbye.